Just ahead on American Black Journal, an update of the state of the African-American child in Detroit. We'll talk about efforts to improve the quality of life for children and for their families. Plus, we'll tell you about two sports programs that are changing the lives of Detroit youth. Stay right there. American Black Journal starts right now. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. As we've heard many times, the most important period in a child's physical, emotional, and intellectual development takes place from the prenatal stage to the age of eight. However, a recent report shows the well-being of children in Detroit is at risk because of poverty and limited access to early childhood education and other services. The report by the Wayne County Great Start Collaborative says one in two children live in poverty in Detroit. It's the highest rate in the country among large cities. In 2010, the number of Detroit children living in poverty jumped from 34.6% to 53.6%. And each year, more than 200 babies born in Wayne County don't live to see their first birthday. The Detroit affiliate of the National Black Child Development Institute is working to improve the quality of life for children and for their families. The group is holding a public policy forum on August 1st to talk about the challenges and the solutions. My guest today is the vice president of the Detroit affiliate, Allison Jones. Thanks for being here on American Black Journal. Hi, Stephen. It's great to be here. Well, you, you read those numbers and you think, are these numbers from 1855 or 1955? They certainly shouldn't be true in 2015. These are very recent numbers and the, they're staggering. And so because of the numbers, not only locally but nationally, uh, over 40 years, National Black Child Development Institute has been um, gathering policymakers. They've been talking to leaders and engaging everyone, parents, educators, in making sure that we talk about and we advocate for issues that affect young black children and their families. Yeah. So this public policy forum that the Detroit affiliate has coming up is really important in that we are engaging organizations and families as well and getting together and talking about the issues and also coming up with strategies yeah. to advocate for It's them. not just about recognizing the numbers yes. or what they mean. It's about trying to figure out, okay, so what, what things can we do Absolutely. that really reverse the trends? Absolutely, and specifically for black families. So the infant mortality rates for black babies are actually almost three times than that of for whites. For whites, So yeah. it is really, it's, it's really um, a, a trying time right now, and it's also a time for us to act. Is that, is that getting worse, or is that, is that uh, trending better? The trend actually seems to be pretty stagnant right now. Yeah. And we really need to, again, engage families, not only in uh, making sure that they have access to health care, but also making sure that they are, you know, once they have access to health care, using that, that health care and sure. having a medical home and having uh, prenatal care and all of that affects not only infant mortality rates, but it a actually also affects the mother yeah. as mothers continue on and caring for their children. Right. So the Detroit affiliate of um, NBCDI is really, really concerned concerned about the issues, and we also want to make sure that we're engaging everyone in the conversation, including those that are affected the most, yeah. the families, the, the parents. The, and families, the families themselves. Yes. Uh, of course, these problems are all linked to poverty, Yes. Uh, but they seem more linked to poverty in the black community than yes. they are in the white community. In other words, uh, there are a lot of poor white communities uh, and, and families who don't seem to have the same yeah. kinds of effects yes. uh, that, that, that black families have Absolutely. when they live in poverty. What, what explains that? I mean, it, there's, a, there's a racial element to this that Absolutely. I think you have to, to confront head on. Absolutely, and so that's some of the conversation that we will be having on August the 1st. Um, if you come to the Northwest campus of Wayne County Community College, you'll be able to hear some of those conversations. Anything from issues around SNAP benefits to other systemic issues yeah. and all the way to auto insurance costs. I mean, all of these factors affect young children. Yeah. You think about a mom who has a young child. If she's worried about 
getting a job or access to benefits. She's not concerned about educating her child sure. because she's concerned about just the basic stability of her family. Yeah. And so we talk about all of those issues and we're not only engaging the educators and the parents and the families, but also policymakers and legislation will be present and will be, you know, sending representatives to hear our voices. And so that's why it's so important for us to, you know, talk about these issues and engage everyone in the conversation so that you know, Lansing and even nationally, they sure. know that we are concerned about these issues and our voices are heard. Yeah. Uh, when you think about the city of Detroit, I mean, we, mm -hmm. we, we are sort of, uh, a lot of people are talking about a tale of two cities, yeah. uh, that, yeah. that the, the progress that we're seeing in some parts of uh, Detroit, downtown and midtown and some mm -hmm. neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, where things are looking up is a real contrast to the rest of the city mm -hmm. uh, where where more people live uh, and where more people live in a much more desperate way. I would imagine that, that uh, this is sort of a manifestation of that narrative. Absolutely, and one of the things that is so vital is that we hold one another accountable. We hold the city accountable. Mm -hmm. We hold the county and the state accountable. And so those are the, some of the conversations that we're having. Um, we're having those as, as members of Black Child Development Institute, and you can find information about becoming a member on NBCDI.org mm -hmm. and then join the Detroit Affiliate because we do actually have you know smaller efforts that as members we participate in. But then, you know, the efforts like this public policy forum are opportunities to talk about some of those gaps. How yeah. do we fill those gaps and how do we as a collective group come forward and say, hey, enough is enough. Yeah. We have to make progress and hey, this is what it could possibly be. It's, like. it's not okay that yeah. these numbers persist right. uh, in it's the not. way that they do. That, that one stat that I uh, referenced in the open, the 200 yeah. babies each year in Wayne County who yeah. don't reach their first birthday, yeah. that's an incredible figure. It what is. is the what is the reason what's the reason for that? Well, there's quite a few. There's the lack of prenatal care. There is, you know, just uh, smoking, I mean, tons of health issues and yeah. health risks, and then some um, just social determinants of health that come along with poverty uh -huh. um, are, are why those numbers exist. They're actually even more staggering for black babies. Yeah. So, you know, 14 out of every 1,000 black babies will not reach their first birthday. Their first birthday, And that's sure. amazing. Right. That those are, those numbers, you know, they break my heart. I have a one-year-old daughter, you know, and so as a parent, those numbers break my heart, and so that's why. Um, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. not having that child with you Absolutely. past that first f that first birthday. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, one of the things I've been talking about a lot in Detroit lately is mm -hmm. the sense of isolation that I think uh, those who live in poverty are starting to yeah. feel because the city has emptied out so much, because mm -hmm. uh, they live in neighborhoods with probably, you know, in some cases more abandoned houses than occupied houses because we don't have uh, a great public transit system yes. uh, for them to get to things that they they, they live more like the rural poor mm -hmm. uh, than than urban poor in in some other in some other cities. Uh, th these numbers sort of suggest that that isolation is is an aggravator here, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And one of the things that the Detroit affiliate of NBCDI is trying to do is when we have events or if we have, you know, um, a, even a membership meeting, we are trying to make sure that we get the information about resources and networks Getting it out to, to people, families. right? Because there's a lot it's that really exists. hard in Detroit. There's actually yeah. a lot that exists. Um, there's a lot of programs and initiatives that exist, but people don't know how to access them, or they can't access them. Right. And so we are trying to work to not only improve that access, but just get the word out about what's going on, what some of the great initiatives are that can help you get out of that isolation and get yeah. into a network. Right. Because research shows that a network of supporters will help you not only as a parent, but as a family in general. Right. Right, right. Um, how, what effect do you feel like the, the the constant sort of budget tension in Lansing around support for social services, around uh, support for you know anti-poverty programs has on this? I mean, I, I can think of oh, I can wow. think of a couple programs <laughs> off the top of my head that yeah. we're not that we're not doing real well with in terms yeah. of funding. But I can also think of the increased funding for early education in the state where we're sort of leading the nation in terms of pivoting uh, more toward that. Those two things sort of played 
both roles, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. and you've brought up two topics where, hey, we've made some improvements in the area of early education. We can't deny that, and that's great. But there is so much work to be done, yeah. especially in uh, you know areas that affect families in general. So maybe not specific to early education, but other budget issues that affect the entire family, which. Right in turn will affect those young children right. and their education and a ability to be educated. Well, and the earned income tax credit Absolutely. is the other thing that I can think of yes. off the top of my head where yeah. uh, that's a real vital economic lifeline for so many families and we've cut back on it and now they're talking about getting rid of it altogether. And so many families count on that and actually plan and budget in that way. Yeah. And so these are some of the conversations that not only need to happen immediately, but we will be acting on and calling and sending letters to legislation about, hey, this is what we would like to see, and this is how it affects and this our is how it, yeah. And this is how it affects us. Our yeah. most precious citizens are affected by these issues. Yeah, so the August 1st uh, forum, yes. open to the public? Open to the public, and again, it's going to be held at the Northwest campus of Wayne County Community College, uh -huh. 930 to noon. We're inviting, if you have a young child in your life that you care about, you you can come. Bring them out. Bring, and, yeah, uh, definitely. Come out and join us. This is important for us to discuss these issues, and it's important for us to come together as a group to talk about it. All so. right. Well, let's hope yeah. this leads to, to some solution making. It will. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just ahead on American Black Journal, two sports programs that are providing Detroit kids with a life-changing experience. That's next, right after this look at some important moments in Detroit's black history. I'm Ken Coleman with a look back at African American life in Detroit. This week in 1947, Michigan Chronicle's Bill Matney blasted the Detroit Tigers for not having a black player on the team. In 1995, newspaper columnist Susan Watson and others at the Detroit Free Press and Detroit News went on strike over pay and work conditions. And in 1968, Detroit Lions great Barry Sanders was born in Wichita, Kansas. These are significant events this week in Detroit's black history taken from the book on this day, African American Life in Detroit. <laughs> for more than 20 years, the Ball Foundation in Detroit has hosted a summer basketball camp for children and for teens. The program not only sharpens the kids' athletic skills, but it also improves their social and life skills. The camp teaches children valuable lessons about maintaining a healthy diet and getting regular exercise. The kids also spend time working on their math and their reading skills, important during the summer. The foundation's overall goal is to empower the kids to tap into their fullest potential and become well-rounded citizens. Here with me now is the organization's founder and president, Randy Henry, along with one of the young camp participants, Jade Goodlow. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks for having us. So, Randy, this is something you know a little bit about. Let's start with, <laughs> let's start with that. What made you think about a basketball camp for children? You know, I started 23 years ago with the basketball camp. The Boys and Girls Club of <coughs> Lloyd H. Deal was about to close down. And so we started it by having the camp and buying memberships for the kids. And as it evolved, my wife was saying, look, we got to do a little bit more than just basketball. Yeah. So we started the educational piece, conflict resolution. Uh, Mike uh, Cheatham over at the uh, Comerica Bank came in and started teaching a financial class with our young kids. Uh, Dr. Joseph um, uh, Kimbrough came in and he's heading up our STEM program. And we're just trying to work with our kids, like you said earlier in your intro, become well-rounded citizens. The basketball, we branched out to volleyball now, so that's our draw to bring them in. Yeah. But we want them to be good people. Because when it's all said and done, basketball has done tremendous things for me. You know, I, I work at Channel 4. I've been there 32 years mm -hmm. uh, because I can read and write. And I've been a strickler on that with my kids. I don't want to be around nobody who can't read and write. So I brought a young lady with me today who's <laughs> done a tremendous job in school, and she's a tremendous athlete. Yeah, yeah. So, Jade, you are one of the, the camp participants. Tell me how you came to be involved in it and what, what you feel you're getting out of the program. Well... I've heard of it over church. They um, um, shown his like program. Uh -huh. I've this is my third year being here. Oh, it's your third year in yeah. the camp. Very good. Um, we don't just do basketball. We also do education with um, our teacher, Dr. Kimbrough, and we learn about what we're gonna do and that we need to learn uh -huh. from ex um, our experiences. Yeah. Um, the basketball piece, we um, scrimmage play, <laughs> boys and, is with boys and girls. Boys and girls on the same um, team, right? We compete. Um, we do drills. 
running, stretching <laughs> when we get there. Yeah. Um, at the end of the year, I mean, of the um, week, we get to um, um, play with the coaches and um, compete with them. And <laughs> well, we haven't lost. I just want to say that in all the 23 years, the we haven't coaches, lost to the kids. Uh, we, we, we may have to cheat a little bit because right. they're kind of young. So. But that's, yeah. And um, we get medals and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and you don't mind having to do schoolwork during the yeah. summer. That doesn't bother you. No. <laughs> See, I think my kids would say, I don't want to do math or reading. Uh, in summer, I'd rather just play basketball. <laughs> he, um, Dr. Kimbrough makes it fun. Yeah. Um, when we're doing it, um, he, you can tell that he cares what um, our future is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would think that in Detroit, where we have lost so much of the support that kids used to have, you know, when I grew up in the city, there was a rec center right. uh, in my neighborhood. And as you point out, the Boys and Girls Clubs were still in lots of places uh, in the city. That's all gone, or at least a very tattered network. Uh, this, this sort of steps in to fill that gap. You know, we're trying to fill up that hole in that, like you said, junior high schools, high schools, they were all open. Uh -huh. That's what we're trying to do now is bring our kids in. Uh, we're over at Cass Technical High School right now. Uh, the principal there, Ms. Phillips, has done a tremendous job giving us availability to classrooms as well as two gyms. Uh -huh. So we take up both our gyms and working out. But my biggest thing with the kids is this. Sports is a great medium to move you forward in life and get education. Well, and you're a great, and, you're a great example. And, and I, and I, I was drafted out of Pistons in 76, uh -huh. didn't make it. Um, I should have made it, that's another story. But, uh, but, <laughs> well, but the thing challenge. is, but having the degree has allowed me, I've taught high school at Northwestern, I taught, high, I taught at Highland Park Community College, uh, I coached at U of D, so I've been at Renaissance High School. So having a degree says one thing to the person across the table for you, that this person can learn. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Channel 4, uh, when I came out of college, there were no computers at Channel 4. And now you cannot even operate. We have a new machine called the ELC, Enhanced Life Control, which does all the things. Yeah. It runs all the cameras. I came here today and I was really shocked to see somebody behind <laughs> the have, camera. We have you know, people still operating still cameras here at DPP. But you know, the, 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 the way to move forward, the educational piece is yeah. so important to me that you got to be able to read and write if you're yeah. going to be successful. Yeah. Uh, Jade, what do you think you would be doing uh, if you weren't in the camp? Tell me a little about where you live in Detroit and what your neighborhood has for you other than other than this? Um, our neighborhood, we have a couple of like rec centers, uh -huh. but it's not really the same. No. It doesn't give the whole full piece, but there are a couple places that offers basketball camps. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what, what do you feel like is different uh, with this particular basketball camp? I, in my opinion, I think it's a lot more funner to <laughs> be. <laughs> Um, it's just a great environment. Yeah, yeah. Great people there. Uh, wh where do the kids mostly come from for the for the? Program? You know, most of my kids come from the inner city. You know, and um, a lot of them. But all over. But, but all over. I mean, we have kids from Canton, and, and I, I'll give you a real quick story. Uh, we had a kid come in, and um, he came out from Canton. We had two hundred four campers that year, and he was the only. Uh, you know, white kid that was there. Yeah. And his mom said, I don't know if this is what I want. I put my arm around him and I said, look, let me have him for one day. And I said, if he doesn't like it, you can have your money back. <laughs> Everybody started calling him Ricky Rubio. Long story short, he wrote an essay on me for that one day. And the Ford Motor Company, he won a $2,500 scholarship. Really? And uh, they called me a quiet hero. And I, I didn't know what was going on. They invited me to come down to the event. And he, he, he wrote this essay on me yeah. on that one day, how I made him feel so much comfortable. In, the, in that situation. Yeah. So my thing is, it's open to anybody to yeah. come down here. And what we're trying to do is reach kids who want to learn, who want to be better people. And I say, like, I brought Jay, she came on Channel 4 with me, so <laughs> she's just a tremendous example of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to get out of it. Yeah. She's a great student, and she's a great athlete. <clears throat> yeah, I always ask people who are working with kids in the city right now, I think, that, you know, it's a very interesting time in Detroit's history. We have a lot of tensions and problems that, that uh, I think are starting to boil over uh, in ways. But, but I'm always as curious, uh, people who are working with kids in the city, what, what you see from them, what, what the potential uh, that you see in them, uh, and what they tell you about what they need and what they, what they want. And here's the thing, and when I'm, I'm glad you said that. When I have an open discussion with a young kid, I, I've never, I always encourage you could be a lot more than what you are right now. 
and use your energies in a positive way. But I see greatness in these kids that they don't even see in themselves. Yeah. And I'm saying if you turn this anger around, if you turn this, uh, I want to be the top dog, but you got to bring somebody along with you. You got to help somebody else along the way. And that's always been my point to help other people get to where they're trying to go. Because so many people have helped me over my life. It's just unbelievable how many. But I see greatness in our young people that they can get it done if they're guided in the right direction. And that's why we have people come in and uh, when I talk about the banking, and I'll give you a quick example. Uh, Michael Cheatham talked about Nikes they had on, the, the Sean Johns. And then he said, here's how much that stock costs. Well, you can own a couple of sh shares of stock in Nike if you bought them $200 gym shoes. <laughs> the gym shoes are going to wear out. Regardless, right. I don't care what it is, it's going to wear right. out. But that stock, stock will pay have. over time. Right? And then those are the kind of things that they're not thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to get them thinking about some things beyond or, out, as they say, outside the box. Yeah. As the future with entrepreneurship, jobs are being lost because of uh, automation. Sure. So you got to start thinking about owning your own business. And small business is what's going to grow this city. It's going to grow our young people to have jobs. they got to get involved with small business. Yeah. So, Jay, uh, what do you think? five, 10, 15 years down the road, what, what do you f see yourself doing uh, here in Detroit or, or elsewhere? Um, well, I have two plans, mm -hmm. actually. Two the, plans, that's Two good. plans, that's, that's right, a plan and a She's backup, ready. right. Yeah, I have a backup plan. So, my, if I want to play um, high school ball, uh -huh. and if I still keep up my work, um, make it to um, college ball, uh -huh. and if I'm still getting better, um, the WNBA. Oh, that's a great goal. <laughs> and then my backup plan, I actually have two. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be um, study as a photog photographer uh -huh. or like study in the medical business because that's what my mom studied. With okay, she's. there you go. So, I mean, and that's that's the mm -hmm. example, right? It's a great you're example. talking I mean, about ath athletics, but also these other things. But, but she, she's, she's special in this event. She has two great parents yeah. who are supporting her. And so it's sometimes we get kids who only have one parent or, or they're not supportive of what they're trying to do. So not that I'm filling the gap to be their parent, yeah. but I want to be that encouragement. I want to be that conduit that says, look, you can do it, yeah. and then help them in the direction where they need to go. But she has two great parents yeah. uh, who were well, supporting that's her. That's important. And, that, and, that's, and that's very vital. All right. Well, thanks for being here, and good luck to you, Jane. Thank you. Appreciate it for having us. Yeah. Finally today, we have a story about another sports program that's helping Detroit youth succeed in school and in life. It's called Rack It Up Detroit, and it combines fitness, academics, and mentoring. Detroit Public Television highlighted this neighborhood program as part of the ongoing American Graduate Initiative. And I've got pictures and video of you all from when you were in fifth grade oh, no. No, that, you, that you are going to love. Rack It Up Detroit is an out-of-school youth development program that uses the sport of squash as a way of engaging kids. We teach the sport as an entry point into their lives. Rack it up, Darion. Good. They are committing to three days a week, about three hours each of those days. They'll spend about half their time in the classroom working on homework and inside our literacy program. Grab the book that you selected from the library. You can grab a bean bag and find somewhere to read, or you can sit in a circle. And they'll spend about half their time on the squash court. Rack it up! Those hours here, not only do they help me with school or squash, but it's like something new every day once you walk in through those doors. We had a notion early on that being community-based, focused in a small set of neighborhoods, tied to neighborhood schools, would reinforce what we were trying to do which is we were ultimately trying to build community. So we'll probably get started in like two or three more minutes. It's not just about the squash and the game. It's about the education and showing the kids something different. Community service projects, book club, anthology work. So that's a little bit of what we're doing today in the classroom. In the fifth grade when I came, I started off with a low GPA, so a 2.5. But as the years went by, it went up, so it went up to a 3.0, and then eventually, at the end of my last year, which was eighth grade in middle school, I graduated with a 4.0. Gonna start off with our warm up. Because the program is not just one thing; it's holistic. To be able to see students mature and make good choices, maybe that they wouldn't have made a year ago, to see them take on leadership roles within the program when maybe they were shy or unsure of themselves initially. So you ready for tomorrow, Chicago? 
Oh, uh, yeah, I'm ready. You did hear that all of you are in, right? Yeah. You came off the wait list. Oh, now we did. Yeah. Wait, so everybody, ca everybody came off the wait list. What's it like to be coaching your brother when he's in a group of other kids? My role model was Mr. Derrick when I was little. So I said, okay, I wanted to do this because I want to be like Mr. Derrick when I grow up. I'm part of something very inspiring. I know that I'm going to get to see people that I really love, whether it's our staff or our volunteers, and certainly our kids. Your sister, Armani, is heading off to Chicago this weekend. How do you think she's going to do? Mr. Derrick is kind of like family to me and a second father because he helped me become a great squash player and he educated me in academics. Four hand grip, four hand grip. Pretend you're shaking hands with your racket. My being in their lives is important, that it matters. Knowing that I'm also giving other people that opportunity to have meaning and purpose, I wouldn't trade it. I couldn't imagine doing something else. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Plus, you can also hear our program on WDET 1019 FM. We'll see you next time on American Black Journal. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal.